Hey guys, this is Andrew from Any Wonderland. Welcome back. So guys, this one is very close to my heart and it's based on a few experiences that I've had and it's very similar to not outing someone um, sexuality or stuff like that if they're not out of the closet yet. It's not outing someone with a disability. If they're in your world, if they work, if they're in your volunteer organisation or what, it might be obvious if they have a physical disability. But if they have mental illness, chronic illness or disability, not outing them because there are situations very similar to those who are, I'm going to use the word queer here, for ease of access, guys. Um, I'm in Australia, that's not considered a slur, it is reclaimed language. Um, and that's the thing, that people have every right to have sexual consenting relationships as well. So that's a really interesting one. But again with that is being aware that you're not outing that person with a disability. So if you're a support worker, um, that's respecting the client's wishes to not wear a uniform or to wear a uniform. Do they want you people to know that they're with a support worker? Do they talk openly about their disability or are they still processing that? If they work, by having an employer knowing that they have that disability, chronic illness or mental health condition, is that going to harm them? Because unfortunately, statistically, if that is not disclosed and an employer finds out, oftentimes I hear it time and time and see it time and time again on Reddit, that people will try and find an excuse to fire someone. But as we're getting the NDIS through, disability is becoming accommodated much, much, much better. Um, people are starting to move away from the sheltered employment model because it's, I think, under award wages that they can pay. The reasoning being it doesn't affect the person's pension. But there's a whole other blog post to um, reasoning behind that um, as well. Some people might be happy in a supported workplace um, to have that little bit of pocket money and the pension or to have that to work in that environment six to twelve months to get something on their resume but then there are others like my myself who are high functioning um run their own business or whatever um it can be quite dangerous for a person if they're running their own business or working as I said, if that person is not comfortable with employers knowing us, that information needs to be kept private. It can, in some situations, put them at a massive risk of harm because, unfortunately, information and malicious gossip does happen. And people with disabilities are statistically more likely to be harmed by support workers through the information that they are supposed to keep private. There are some brilliant ones out there, do not get me wrong. But that's the thing, they train the support and the support agencies on harm. But it's with the Royal Commission and things that are coming out now, we're seeing that this has been the thread of the support organisations having overreach. Um, I know that the Commission is working on guidelines to prevent that overreach and sometimes that overreach is necessary but that's a really interesting one of so generally the etiquette around this is to ask the person if you're a support worker and you're obliged to wear a uniform ask the person do they want you to wear a uniform or casual clothes um, then the person should have checked out if that's a policy that they have. When people start, say you're with a volunteer organisation that works with children, 
does that volunteer organisation need them to go through their specific framework or do you push them out as soon as parents and friends come if you're responsible for setting up the meeting, organisation, opening up, etc. Going to the church service type of thing, these are all community access activities that I have heard support workers helping people to get to, but are you then expected to stay with the person, pick the person up, what's the go? And this goes into the person-centred model of disability. And if you're talking to a person about your life in the fellowship, if you stay with the person, how do you talk about the person? Do you say that you're their support worker? Do you frame them as a client, as a friend, as a participant? Because people, unless it's a physical disability, that you is obvious that person might not want people to know that that's a support worker they might be embarrassed it might as i said put them at risk of harm of loss of employment there's a multi they might be perceived to be judged they might be ostracized i've done the how to annoy a person with a disability it might be well-meaning but patronising comments start coming their way and there is a emotional impact to having a physical disability as well as um, lots of ties between mental health and chronic illnesses as well and so those phrases that are well intentioned might actually be triggering in the true sense of the word to the person so what i'm saying by triggering is not the whole i'm so triggered i'm offended no it's it's going to trigger that person to go on a really deep dark thinking pattern that then puts them at risk of hospitalization against their own will um it might open up avenues of extortion, manipulation or further harm and the support worker's role is to prevent that. So you're seeing where I'm going with this of protecting that person's information through in the moment through being self-aware of oh no I'm with XYZ person and then the person might ask well what do you do for work? Oh I'm a support worker. And so redirecting that conversation if that person doesn't want to know. But then on the flip side, if they're open and honest about it, how open and honest are they? I've introduced people as my support worker. And uh, they know, okay, bonus, we've got Andrea and support worker for X this amount of time, we can get this done. And this also then goes into the video I recorded about disability and organisation. A support worker, support coordinator can help you with that organisation, help you stay on track with that. Um, a really, really good support worker will keep that information confidential or tell you how they're going to use that information. If there's information that would benefit you by having other agencies, support workers know that information. If um, the agency you go through or if you've got a private person does an intake process having a look at that as well so guys I hope that helped and general rule of thumb to remember is if you don't wouldn't want that information plastered on front page of reddit facebook or the local newspaper print newspaper in your town another person wouldn't want it either and that's the difference between gossip and information sharing um, information sharing is if you are legally obliged so putting that in your notes your record keeping that's i think like i keep a record of every video i've recorded every blog post blog post ideas have i got people that I've researched with do they need to be credited is the research accurate that's where I'm going with this guys so please guys like share and subscribe and put your comments down below of how 
you frame your disability or if you prefer people not to know or is it one of your strengths leave it in the comments below please like share and subscribe and guys i will be taking a break over christmas new year but i've got lots of content pre-recorded and you'll see a bit of a new style fresh look some interviews coming up so guys and i'm renewing my netflix so there will be some shadow hunters content coming with those disability links as well and you might see me and hear me pop up in a few unusual places guys as my profile is getting a bit higher as well so guys um please have a safe and happy christmas and holidays and for those of you who it's not a happy time of year my heart goes out to you guys um please don't overspend remember gifts that are from the heart and heart handmade or even acts of service are perfectly acceptable gifts guys